glory. How many of y'all know that you're being attacked? If you don't know, you know it now, okay? <laughs> so, in this attack, how many of y'all know you're being trained, tested, perfected, purified? So you come out like him. Every challenge that comes to you, God knows. So when you get attacked unexpectedly, don't think that God doesn't know. Hello? See, one of the things we always want to do is allow him to have the last say. That cannot happen until it's recognized. So when you acknowledge him, you're allowing him to have the last say every time. When you don't acknowledge him, you don't allow him to have the last say. See, people walk in an assumption. Well, God knows. Yeah, he does know. But there's something you're required to do. Acknowledge. One of the things David did all the time, King David, and don't get me wrong, David challenged God by standing on his word. He says, your word says. Your word says. Now, I'm not going to ask you to challenge God because of your sin. Hello? Because you're going to lose. Don't justify your sins. But you can challenge him on his word because he loves it. He wants to know if you're willing to challenge him on his word. Does everybody get this? And it's not in an offensive or disrespectful way. Amen? It's in a way of saying, I'm standing on what you said. So I want to remind you of what you said. Not like he forgot. But he wants you to know it. Thank you. Amen? He wants you to know it. So by you and I, we're not actually challenging him in a disrespectful way. Lord, you said. Lord, you said. When somebody promised you something, didn't you say to them, man, you said. Man, you said this. What are you going to do, come against it? Can God lie? No. The only reason why there's a delay is because something's in the way. Everyone say, delay is because something's in the way. When something's in the way, it means that we caused it. Amen? We caused it. God didn't cause it. We caused it. Now, the enemy promotes it and provokes it, but we accepted it. And we allowed something to get in the way. How many of you know sin is in the way all the time? Even David said, I, my sin is always before me. Amen? So in this, how many of y'all know that disobedience <laughs> will get in your way? How many of y'all know your tongue will get in the way? That's the number one thing that always gets in the way is your tongue. You know what your tongue does? It prints out your carnality in your heart. When you speak, it's printed out. So when people are in the flesh and they speak out or they have no control, listen, if you don't have a control over your tongue, the enemy has control over you. People lose their deliverance because of their tongue. People lose their freedom because of their tongue. That's the first thing that the enemy tries to do is get you to speak what he feels like. Not what God feels like. There's a difference. Amen? One of the things that the enemy's always trying to do is get us into a place where God's love is breached. You know, one of the things that always happens as you're going through stuff, the devil always comes to you and said, where's your God? Where's your God? I mean, he did that. Uh, David wrote about it all the time. Where's your God? He always tries to get us in a place where we doubt, where there's unbelief, where we don't trust. 
Amen? He's always trying to get us into a place where our back is towards God instead of our face towards God. One of the things he's doing right now, you know, we've always talked about God's love. God is love. Amen? And there's perfect love, and perfect love casts out all fear. But there's a place where God is perfecting perfect love in us. And that is a process in the conversion of your soul and everything else. He is perfecting perfect love. Now, love is a life, L-O-V-E, love. Life of virtue, existence. What is love? Life of virtue, existence. And what is virtue? Well, it's, it's uprightness and conduct. It's a moral excellence. You may call it the divine nature. And there are fruits of perfect love. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Perfect or perfecting love is tonight's release. 1 Corinthians 13. Love. Life of virtue existence. Virtuous. Okay. Virtuous, it says. <laughs> virtuously. Okay, my wife says virtuous. Life of virtuous existence. I can go along with that. 1 Corinthians 13. Hallelujah. They're going to start a whole new dictionary in heaven. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Verse 1, would you read it with me? Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but not have love, I have become sounding brass or clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love does what? Here's the fruits. Are you ready? Here's the fruit of love. Love does what? Suffers. Hmm. Suffers what? Long. Nice. And it is what? It stays kind during its suffering. Does everybody get it? It stays what? Kind during its suffering. Doesn't blame. Doesn't grumble. Doesn't complain. Doesn't make excuses. Accepts the sufferings, which is challenges, but maintains an attitude of gratitude, knowing what? God has got the last say. Oh, hallelujah. Let's see what else we got here. Love does not what? Envy. In other words, it doesn't become jealous either. Love does not parade itself prideful. Puff up itself. It's not puffed up. It does not behave rudely during sufferings. Does not seek its own or become selfish. It's not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. In other words, endures. It endures all things. Hmm? Believes all things. In other words, doesn't worse first. Gives the person the opportunity. Does everybody get that? This is God's love now. This is not lust. This is not worldly love. This is how God looks at things. This is where he's trying to get me and you to. And everything. He's trying to perfect 
perfected love. So that we see what he sees, we sense what he senses, and he loves the way he loves. Not the way man lo loves or carnality loves. It's all selfishness. It's all lust. Living under Satan's torment. That's what lust is. It's a life under Satan's torment. Why? Because it's always in desire of self. Looking for a fulfillment. See, in reality, you and I are looking for God's love all the time. And his presence is love. That's where we came from. That's why it bears all things. It endures all things. It believes all things. It gives everybody the opportunity to be right before they're wrong. Hello? And even when they're wrong, still trust God. That's when we say, I forgive you and I bless you. And you let it go. You don't need opinions on it. Amen? You don't need anything on it. You turn it over to God. Let them take care of it. Let him take care of it. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. In other words, believes that all things are going to work to the good. No matter what's going on. Just think about all the stuff you and I did. If God didn't believe his own word, hello? We'd really be in trouble. He's saying, look, I know it's going to work to the good. I know it's going to work to the good. So everything that you see everybody going through, that should always be in your mind if you carry the love of God. It's going to work to the good. Yeah, you're, you blew it. You're an idiot, but you're going to work to the good. Yeah, you did this, you did that, but you're going to work to the good. I saw the works of evil, but it's going to work to the good. Why? Because I'm praying for you. Somebody get this. See, this is the power of prayer. We've got to come out. Look what Jesus did on the cross. What was his words? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, even though they knew what they did. But he looked beyond all of that. He's always looking beyond. Hopes all things, endures all things. Love never what? It never fails. You will never fail if you maintain God's love. Never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away because you won't need it in this realm. <laughs> For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. Why? Because perf perfect love will take over everything. Are you ready for the next part? When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, when I matured more in Christ, I put away what? Childish lust. Childish thinking. Childish selfishness, childish pride. I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. And now abide, abide, connect, live in faith, hope, love. These three. And the greatest of these is what? The greatest of these is what? Love. Perfect love. Love promotes justice and righteousness all the time. It always promotes justice and righteousness. First John chapter 4. Oh, hallelujah. You know, nobody wants to see anybody end up in hell. If you do, then you've got a real problem. <laughs> you've got, in fact, I would say you're not in the spirit at all. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, and again, we may want to, we may step back and watch people go through trials and tribulations 
because of the afflictions they brought on themselves or wrong decisions. But we never want anyone to end up in hell. Amen? Even a murderer. I mean, God desired everyone to be saved. All well, that person deserves to go to hell. Well, so did we. We're trying to tell everybody so that they don't end up in hell. Amen? 1 John chapter 4 and verse 7. Isn't that God's love? He desires no one to perish and go to hell. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Is everybody there? Beloved. I mean, be loved. Be loved. Beloved. Be loved. You know, some people have a hard time accepting love. But they sure have an easy time accepting lust. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. Love is, for love is what? Of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God. For God is love. God is love. So, when you begin to think about this and put it in perspective, he's trying to exchange us all. Remember, we live a life of exchange now. Because we're being, we are born again, but we're in a regeneration, always regenerating. We are in the process of exchanging. Conversion process is exchanging. You're exchanging all your lustful ways of your past, all, everything that's impure, contaminated, and defiled, we're exchanging. It's a constant. Amen? So in this, we're exchanging our lust for his love. Our lust for his love. It's a process all the time. That's why he brings us through things. Especially when you get disappointed. When you get offended. There's nothing wrong with getting offended, disappointed, getting angry. It's what you do with it. Everyone's going to get offended, disappointed, or angry at some time. But are you going to hold it? You're going to fall into a place in the pit of bitterness, unforgiveness? Amen? Are you going to hold a grudge? All of these are not God's love. That is L-U-S-T. A life under Satan's torment. Because people that live that way are always under torment. Torment. In other words, in this, a person always wants to be recognized. That's torment. If you need to be recognized by man, then you're not being recognized by God. See, this is where we know that he knows. As we're exchanging and we're walking and we're going through the process of perfecting perfect love, not perfect lust. Hallelujah. Is everybody all right? Again, he who does not love does not know God. For God is what? Love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. That word might means you must cooperate. That means there's that process that's called deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. That is a process. That means deny yourself, deny your thoughts, deny your tongue, deny your attitude, deny everything of carnality. Denied your old man. See, one of the things the enemy likes to do is come and provoke you so you drop the garments of the Spirit and pick up the garments or the garments of love and pick up the garments of lust. That's a challenge everyone gets attacked with all the time. Why? Because when you do that, you lose your identity. When you lose God's love, you've lost who you are. Is everybody all right? Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Um, in verse 10, I think that's where we are, aren't we? In this is love, 
Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. In other words, we're looking to the best of someone, not the worst. Nobody's perfect. Amen? That's what you need to judge yourself first. You better pull out that national grand forest out of your own eye before you pull out the tree trunk out of somebody else's. Amen? Hallelujah. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. In other words, you see through individuals' faults. Does so everybody understand that? You see through individuals, carnality. You see through it. That's why you forgive and you bless. You forgive and bless. Let God take care of it. Amen? Why? Because when you forgive and bless, God's going to bring them through something to awaken them to get their attention so they turn their hearts towards him. Hallelujah. Verse 13. By this we know that we abide in him. By this we know that we abide in him. That means you're abiding in his love. Because God is love if you abide in him. And he in us. Because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the father has sent the son as a savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the son of God. God abides in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. And love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Now think about that. As he is, as he is. Who is he? He is love. As he is, so are we to be in this world. We are to be his love. Amen. And there is no fear in love. But perfect love does what? It casts out fear. Because fear involves what? Torment. What does lust involve? Torment. Same thing, isn't it? Because fear is lust and lust is fear. But he who fears has not been made perfect in God's love. We love him because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him that he who loves God must love his brother also. Now, as we went through the attributes of the fruits of love, there wasn't one word that said feel. Not one word that said, this is where people lose sight of it. Love is a character. It's a divine character of God Almighty. He is love. He didn't choose me and you because he felt like it. Hello? He doesn't go by how he feels. He goes by who he is. He is love. Life of virtuous existence. That's what love is. Glory. Second Peter chapter 1. So we want to be loved as beloved, not be lusted. Second Peter chapter one. And verse something, verse two. I think Second Peter chapter one, verse two. That's first Peter. Is everybody there? Let's speak at verse two. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? 
knowledge of God and of our Jesus our Lord, as his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and by what? Virtue. Virtue. Upright conduct. Moral excellence. By which have been given to us exceedingly and great promises, precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Lust. In other words, there's an exchange. Lust for love. Lust for love. See, now the world looks at, they know love in an area of carnality. Love is a high level of good in the world. But those who are born of the Spirit of God, born of love, because see, you are born of love now, true love, eternal love, everlasting love, not temporary. Temporary love is lust. Amen? So we should be able to see through all of this foolishness, releasing the love of God, regardless of what. And using wisdom not to attach ourselves to the lust of the world or false love. Not attaching, not agreeing, walking away from it. And defending God's love against Satan's lust. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. In verse 5. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your Faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness. Why? This is all in love. To godliness, brotherly kindness. This is all about God's love. And brotherly kindness, love. That's the end result. Everything is on that foundation there of love. For if these things are yours and abound, you'll never what? Neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because nothing will be held from you. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even blindness. Why? Because they're caught up in themselves. And has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never what? You'll never stumble. You'll never stumble into lust again. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Divine nature is perfect love. We are in the process of perfecting perfect love. 1 Corinthians, no, let's go to Romans 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Romans 8.31. There's something that love hates. Now this may sound strange. I mean love hates? Yes. Love hates sin. Love hates unrighteousness. Love hates lawlessness. Why? Because it attacks love. Anything that attacks God's love Love hates. And what is two things that love produces, promotes? Love promotes justice and righteousness. And Romans 8.31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is God, it is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? 
shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. See, when you go through these things, this is where the enemy comes up and says, where is your God? Where is your God? He wants to convince you that God has left you. you haven't, no matter what you've done, you know, it's not even what you've done. There'll be things that God doesn't like what he does, what we've done, but it has never affects his love for me and you. Never. Never does it affect his love for me and you. No matter what anyone has done, whether they've raped a child, whether they've murdered, whatever, God's love towards that person is still always there. That person will bring condemnation on themselves because they rejected God's love. Does everybody get that? That person rejected God's love and accepted Satan's lust. And that what puts them into hell. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody all right? Verse 36. As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So where's the love of God? In Christ Jesus. So if you're not a Christian, how can you carry the true love of God? You can't. It's impossible. You can carry high level of goodness. You can call things love, but you'll never carry the true love of God, eternal love, the perfecting love. Amen? Is everybody all right? You're cool now, right, man? 1 Corinthians 2. Are you getting God's love? Drink it up. Glory. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. You know why we love to worship? Because we love God. Because His love is in His presence also. I mean, His presence is love, isn't it? You know, it's hard for people to understand who've never been Addicted. When you really look at an addict, we must look at them as chasers of God's love. The problem is, is they're not accepting God's love. They're accepting Satan's lust. But deep inside, they're actually looking for home. See, because every one of us on this planet is looking for home. We're all trying to get home, even though we may not understand it. We're trying to get home. When we're out there using, partying and everything, we were looking for a fulfillment because that's the great. We're looking to get high because we came from the most high, right? God's love. And there were times when you thought you might have reached it. Then the enemy showed up. Then you realize what you touched and agreed with. Wrong. Verse 9. For as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Those who love him. Does he love us all? Yeah, but what about those who love him? That's different. In other words, that's an individual that has accepted God's love. Now, when you've accepted God's love, you love him. If you haven't accepted God's love, you can't love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God, which is the breath of love. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. See, so when we begin to hear about the word God, we've got to begin to look at love. 
It's his love because that's who God is. It's always his love. Everything is about his love. He created everything in love. He created me and you in love. Everything is love, love, love. Not lust. But because of the fallen nature, we battle with this in every area. People are so easily persuaded to drop the garments of God's love for the garments of the devil's lust. Verse 13. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man doesn't get it. He cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. Why? Because he doesn't have the love of God. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ, the love of Christ. So in other words, we have God's thoughts. We talked about it already. We have God's thoughts, which is love. Amen? So there's a constant area where we're exchanging lust for love. Not slipping out of the devouring garments, maintaining them into the gar of from re rejecting the garments of the flesh we must take possession of our soul if you do not have possession of your soul in the spirit the soul will take possession of you and that's where people are always led by how they feel oh man i just don't feel well that you forget the feeling stuff man People that live by a life of feeling are dangerous. Peace, joy, and righteousness is God's love. Amen? That's the feeling. Must take possession of the soul, flesh, and especially, again, the tongue. When prints, what prints out all hidden lust of the heart when provoked. See, people are okay as long as they're not provoked. But when the enemy comes, and even sometimes God comes and pushes the button. You know, I look at a person as a vending machine, and there's slots. There's all kinds of candy in this stuff, chips, you know, all delicacies of corruption. <laughs> we call junk food. And God will allow the push button. What's he trying to do? He's trying to empty every slot. But see, this is an area where a person gets provoked because it's still there. Until it is emptied and each slot is filled with God's perfect love, there'll be no react. There'll be love respond. But that is the process we're going through. Everybody goes through it. So don't beat yourself up because you blew it. Amen? The enemy comes to restack them. <laughs> he comes to refill them. <laughs> God's trying to empty them. The devil's trying to fill them. <laughs> Second Peter chapter 2. Deceptive food we call. He's trying to put deceptive bars in us. Second Peter chapter two. Oh, happy days. Second Peter chapter two and verse one. Is everybody there? But there was also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in deceptive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring them on themselves with destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. 
Now, truth is always associated with love. God's truth is God's love. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. What are they trying to do? Exchange love for lust. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world, but saved no one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly and delivered righteous lot who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For the right, that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. In other words, no respect. Whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. Has so everybody got it? Ooh. Torment righteous souls. Again, these individuals fall into a place when they are provoked they lose all reverence. Amen. They lose all re reverence and respect to righteous authority. Self-willed all life under Satan's torment. Remember, it's a high level of love of self. People carry a high level of love of self. That's not God's love. That's Satan's lust. 1 John chapter 5. In verse 18, First John 5, 18, perfecting love. I guess we might say perfecting perfect love. In verse 18, let's speak it. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself in God's love. And the wicked one does not touch him. Keeps himself in what? God's love. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his Son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols, which are also known as lust. Oh, yeah. Love doesn't sin or doesn't approve it either. God's love. It hates sin and evil. It's in a process of maintaining perfect love. We are always trying to maintain perfect love. When you are maintaining perfect love, you'll maintain God's presence. Philippians 4. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Philippians 4 verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord when you feel like it. <laughs> rejoice in the Lord when? Always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. 
Be anxious for everything. Be anxious for what? Nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication. How many of y'all know anxious is an emotion? <laughs> is anxiousness love? No. It's torment. Because it's associated with fear. So a person that can't be set, can't get settled or be still is tormented. And tormented with lust. Not love. Love does not torment. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. In other words, you are, you're living in God's perfect love. You always have peace. Why? Because you know everything's always works to the good. And God has a plan. Amen? God, listen, when everything goes crazy around me, that's the only thing I can think of. God's got a plan. What is it? It's for me to escape this place, man. It's for me to get the snap out of here. <laughs> and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen? <laughs> Finally, brethren, whatever things are what? True. Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, divine conduct, divine character, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. What is it? It's all God's love. These things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these things do, and the God of all peace will be with you. <laughs> but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. So what is he saying? Focus on his love. Everything that's associated and connected to his love, focus on it. First Peter chapter 2. First Pete. Chapter two, verse one. There is a flow in God's love. There's a flow. There's always a refreshing. There's a flow. And when you and I are carrying God's love and we get in God's presence, we make connection. Verse 1. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and evil speaking. As newborn babes desire pure milk of the word that you may be that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by man, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be what? Be what? Put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, who follow, you are precious. But those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become a chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people of God, but now are people of God, who have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against your what? War against your what? Your soul. In other words, they're tr trying to promote the soul Back to its original state. Amen? A fallen one. 
having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitations. Wow. Lost against the soul. What's it trying to do? It's trying to prevent conversion. Delay it. We want to be in a place where we have a conscience without offense. You want to have a conscience without offense. Where you are free. Free of everything. Free. There's a wonderful place in God's love where we are just so free that nothing matters. 2 Timothy 3. Three verse one. Hallelujah. But know this in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be what? Lovers of themselves. Now you know that ain't God's love, is it? So they're gonna be under the life under Satan's torment. Lust. For men will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Again, lovers of pleasure, which is lovers of lust, rather than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness, but deny his power. And from such people, turn away. Don't associate. Don't promote. Amen? Turn away. For this sort of those who creep into households and make captives of gullible men and women, loaded down with sins, led away with various lusts. They're always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth where they can become free because they've never truly accepting God's love. They're still living in a life of lust, not in the life of God's love. Amen? These are last days. Life under Satan's torment. We see it all over. You turn on the TV, you go down the street, you go to the stores, whatever. Galatians chapter 5. Remember, the enemy is attacking in every way to exchange God's love for Satan's lust. Galatians 5, verse 16. I say then walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Why? Because if you're walking in the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit, you're being filled with God's love. Listen, nothing can penetrate God's love unless you allow it. Unless you react. Oh, hallelujah. I say then walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So you do not do the things that you desire or wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law of death and sin. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions and heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past that those who practice such things do not carry the love of God and will not enter the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Joy. Peace. Long-suffering. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Now, isn't this love? Because the Spirit is love. He's the breath of love. He is love. He's the carrier of love. He's the promoter of love. He's the perfecter of love. 
to all of these, but the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of God is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, gentleness, against all these things, against no law. There's no law of judgment here. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Why? Because you just opened the door and exchanged love for lust. Hebrew 12. Hebrew. Perfecting perfect love. Again, this is a process, isn't it? We are tested on it. And if you blow it, your test will come again. <laughs> Verse 3, Hebrews 12, 3. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons and daughters. My son and daughter, do not despise my chastening, says the Lord, nor be discouraged when I rebuke you. For whom I love... Him I will chasten and scourge every son and daughter whom I receive. So welcome to the house of death. <laughs> if you endure his correction, rebuke, cor and everything else, chastening, God deals with you as sons and daughters. For what son or daughter is there whom a father does not chasten or correct? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you're illegitimate and not his children. What's he trying to do? He's draining us through the process of cut loose of lust for love. Yeah. Furthermore, we've had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not more much readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chasten us as seemed best to them. But he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. How many of y'all know his holiness is his love? Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but it's painful. It's actually kind of shameful. Because we become shamed in ourselves. Why? Because there's something we did that disappointed him. Amen? Nobody loves to be corrected, but we should accept it because we accept his correction, not his punishment. See, when people accept correction as punishment, why are you punishing me? That's flesh. That's carnality. That's lust. Why? They're trying to protect lust. They're trying to protect it instead of release it and accept God's love. Remember, chasing needs to exchange. Trials is to exchange. Everything you and I live is a life of exchange. Everything you go through is to exchange. Every challenge, everything. God wants to know what level of faith you are. He wants to know what level of love you are. He wants to know where you are. He knows where you are, but you may not. He wants you to know where you know where he is. <laughs> or he is. Or she is. Anyway. Praise God. Is everybody okay? Verse 11. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of what? Righteousness. That's what God pursues. I mean, God's love pursues what? Promotes righteousness and justice. To those who have been trained by it. That sounds kind of crazy. We're being trained by God's love? Yes. We're being trained 
to express God's love, accept God's love, carry God's love, live in His love. And it's freedom. I'm going to close at 2 Thessalonians 2. Perfecting perfect love. Hallelujah. Verse 13, but we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren beloved, by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through what? Sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. To which he called you by our gospel for obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught either by word or by our epistle. Um, now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us eternal, everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work in his love. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God, be blessed, and stay dressed with the glory. Anybody want to pray? Come on, God's love, let's go. Come on, lift your hands to heaven. Lord, we are honored and blessed for your love. We stand before you in this great presence of love that you've brought us, that you... <laughs> put up with us and that you're always there. Let your love not only surround us but saturate us, flow through us and may the world see your love in us. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God.